from five continents, jewellery lovers, collectors and dealers had come to play their part in what town and country had billed the jewellery sale of the century. Photographers lined the back wall, a large team manned the phones, and as the clock struck 10am on June the 19th, 2019, the first of five Christie's auctioneers took the stage at his podium in New York's Rockefeller Center for what would be an epic 12-hour event. It's not every day, the Financial Times enthused, that a vast number of museum-quality jewels hailing from a single world-famous collection finds its way under the hammer. Belonging to Sheikh Hamad Altani, the 388 lots up for sale in the Maharajas and Mughal Magnificence auction spanned five centuries and some of the most extravagant rulers in history. An Aladdin's cave of treasures, Forbes had called them, if only one could find a lamp with a genie to help finance a bid. Many of the Cartier pieces came up in the afternoon session. Lot number 228, a 1922 bejeweled belt buckle brooch made for the Marchioness of Chumley, was always expected to garner significant interest. With its enormous 38.71 octagonal emerald centerpiece, surrounded by diamonds, sapphires and more emeralds, it was typical of Cartier's Eastern-inspired Art Deco creations of the period. Bidding started at $400,000. Rising initially in increments of $20,000 and then leaps of $50,000, it didn't take long for the digital ticker on the screen behind the auctioneer to surpass the jewel's $500,000 to $700,000 estimate. When the hammer finally came down, the price of over $1.5 million drew gasps and a round of spontaneous applause from the audience. It wasn't the only Cartier piece to be fought over that day. From a Belle Epoque diamond and platinum corsage ornament to a 1930s Tutti Frutti brooch, a rare graduated natural pearl necklace and a Maharaja's ruby and pearl choker, there were 21 Cartier pieces in the sale. Eight of them reached over $1 million. One exceeded $10 million. In total, the number of Cartier lots accounted for just 5% of the overall number, but ended up contributing a quarter of the final $109 million value, a staggering result, and yet not altogether surprising. Through the 21st century, antique Cartier pieces have been among the most coveted items of jewellery on the planet. If you see an old jewel signed Cartier, one jewellery expert revealed, you can triple the value. Those pieces are just in a different league. In 2010, the Duchess of Windsor's 1950s Cartier Onyx and Diamond Panther became the most expensive bracelet ever sold at Sotheby's. When Barbara Hutton's 1933 Cartier Jade Necklace went under the hammer in Hong Kong four years later, it made history as the highest-valued jadeite jewel of all time. In 2017, Jackie Onassis's Cartier 1960s tank watch sold for triple its estimate, while in the record-breaking 2016 sale of Elizabeth Taylor's jewels, it was a Cartier necklace that came out on top. With such illustrious worldwide recognition, it's perhaps hard to imagine that it was ever any other way. But the intense competition and willing parting of millions of dollars for jewels bearing that familiar italicized signature couldn't be further removed from how Cartier's founder started out. Exactly 200 years before the headline-grabbing auction in New York, Louis-François Cartier made his entrance into a very different world. <laughs>